people. I didn't get a video out this week and I get a lot of DMs asking what's going on with the 250R, so now this is happening. This will just be a small vlog style video and I'm gonna kind of explain what's been going on with the 250R. Things are moving along just fine. I did take a couple days off and it was one of those vacations that I just kind of never returned from. And this past week was a total wash, man. I was in here working, but it just, nothing was working out. You guys know what I mean. If you ever have one of those weeks where it's just like, running into small problems and stuff. And uh, I've been doing little things. So let me flip you around here and I'll show you what's going on. So this is how the 250R sits. It looks sick. The motor went in really easy for the most part. There's a little bit of an issue in the back that will be in the next video that I'm working on currently. The radiator is on. We got that custom radiator guard from Shell Vest, the American flag in the background. Came out really, really nice. Pretty unique uh, radiator and scoop setup. Like nothing I've ever seen before anyway. Got the RTC scoops. The colors and everything came together really nice. I think it's looking awesome. The gold fox shocks going with the color scheme really well. Everything looks really good. Motor's looking good in there. We got the rear shock mount. Uh, the reservoir mounted up here. Some people do ask, they wanna know why it's all the way up here, because it's for the rear shock, you know? Um, but they come with these really long uh, cables, and a lot of guys mount them in the front. I've seen guys mount them here, on the other side. Some guys run them in the back, and they put it like where the toolkit would go. I guess that would actually be this side. But I wanted to run it here, and uh, I kinda wanted to keep it away from heat, but it doesn't really look like that's what's gonna be happening, because you can see it's right by the cylinder head and the exhaust is going to come through here. So that may change, um, but it looks cool for sure. Then coming around this side, you can see the ESR airboxless intake. I know a lot of you guys aren't happy with the decision I'm making there, but I think we're going to be just fine. This is the way that ESR sent everything to me, so we're going to run it that way. And I think it's gonna be fine. We got the K&N style filter. It's not an actual K&N. It's a paper filter. I oiled it with, um, I think it was Maxima filter oil. No, it's actually K&N oil. And uh, the outerwear on there. I think we'll be okay. Um, not gonna be like going through mud and stuff, at least not initially. Got the carb on there with these gold lines. I think that came out really nice. It goes with the color scheme. And the HPI ignition, this is like all, uh, not custom, but Nothing is OEM with the ignition. So that's the HPI system, HPI system that I got from LED Performance. Arlen loves these things. He says they're really good. It was a little tricky getting it to work. I don't think it was an issue with the actual HPI, but I wasn't getting spark. And what it ended up being is the motor just wasn't grounded to the frame well enough. So this powder coating is pretty thick. And what I ended up doing is on, not this motor mount, it was the one over here, I sand, I took this motor mount off, sanded the back of this motor mount, the back of the frame, and then the front of the motor mount and all the contact areas. And then when I bolted it up, now the motor has a nice uh, ground to the frame and I got really good spark. So that's all set up. All the electric stuff is done. Um, you can see, if you look through here, where is it at? Right here, got the hour meter. That's gonna go right about here and I have all my cables and everything. CDI is up here. Tried to keep that a little bit away from the coil and somewhat out of the heat range. It'll be above the radiator. That's probably the hottest thing in the area. But you're supposed to keep that away from hot stuff. It should be good like that. About to zip tie all this stuff up and make it look really neat and tidy. I also have a kill switch. It runs up here, up under the handlebars. I try to make it look really clean. And then we have the kill tether here. You hook that up to your, I believe, belt. I guess you could put it on your wrist too. And that way if you fly off the quad, the uh, engine will kill. And then of course we have the traditional kill switch. They're both wired together and run through here. Like I said, try to make everything really clean. So now really all I need to do is tidy up those wires, get the radiator hoses on. I've got red and I've got black. Um, I ordered red initially. And I think it's just a little too radical. 
you know, there is red on the quad. You got the Elka Shock with the red right there. You got the red brake lines, but this is a really bright red. And I just think it doesn't flow. So I ordered some black GPI lines. I think black is going to go a lot nicer. So I'll put those on. We're going to put the inline temperature gauge from Boss Racing. And then, of course, we've got to put the uh, gas tank on. This is like one of the few things that's untouched on this machine. All I did was clean it really well. And it did clean up really nice. And uh, up here, it's a little discolored and faded. I, believe the, I do believe this is the original gas tank. It just shouldn't really matter though because we got this Trick Forwards carbon fiber cover. Go fast, oh yeah. But yeah, so that goes on there. Uh, it doesn't sit quite flush, so I believe that these rubber buffers need to be removed. There's just three screws that come out. So I actually sent a picture to DBC Racing just asking if they take those off because tank covers don't come with instructions. But it's gonna look trick. And then we're gonna have the billet gas cap go right here. However, this gas cap doesn't fit. So I'm gonna have to uh, contact Alba. I guess they either sent the wrong one or maybe this isn't a 1987 tank, but I'm uh, pretty sure that it is a 1987 tank. So we'll get the correct gas cap there. All this other stuff, I really just cleaned. I repainted this front mount, uh, some of the other pieces, the fuel pack cock cleaned that up, made sure that both of the, the on and reserve have good flow. This as well, the filter, I, cl I clipped off because uh, the filters were blown out. So I just won't run a filter on this uh, setup, but everything cleaned up really nice, especially like, look at this mount. Everything was really clean on this quad. I mean, it was covered in mud and whatnot, but it cleaned up nice. Got our smoke colored lines. I don't know if you guys can see through them, but they're, they're transparent, kind of like a smoke color. And I think that's going to look really good with these gold lines and go with the color scheme. So I'm excited to see what that looks like. And of course, we got the graphics here. That's going to be the last thing that goes on. These are from AGMX, and they came out amazing. There's that custom decal I made honoring the military. And then beyond that, we're going to get this ESR exhaust on. That is going to look trick. That's the most iconic looking thing on the 250R, I think having that big expansion chamber go across the machine. I just think it's such a badass look. I can't wait to get that on there. So then it'll be a uh, starting time. Let's put the fluids in there. I think I'm gonna put the Nerf bars on too. Got them in here because it'll be a little weird trying to kick this thing over without anything to stand on. And I do have in here, there are custom nets. So that will be in the next video, lacing up those Nerf bars. And there's one other thing. Oh yeah, for those Nerf bars. Dude, these pegs are crazy. Look at these pegs, dude. These are factory 43 Nerf bars. Like, dude, these are huge. Look at the size. <laughs> you have two people's boots on there, man. It's still bigger than stock, even for two. That's crazy. And then NPM made these custom mounts with my logo on them. And these go around the frame like so. And that's where the heel guards will meet up. Because the fact the or the factory 43 heel guard mounts was just a a U-bolt. And honestly, I just wasn't down with that. So NPM and I got together and they hooked me up with these really nice billet aluminum ones. These are gonna look way better and they're gonna be way stronger. I'm pretty excited to see what they look like. So that's pretty much it. Um just kind of been like slowly getting this thing together. There can be a lot of stuff that just takes a lot of time when you're doing little fine, final, finalizing touches. One other thing I did, I, I bled the brakes and the back brake came out just fine. And uh, this one front caliper, there was a little bit of dribble. They were working really well. Like I got good pressure with the brakes and there's just a tiny little bit of dribble. So I got a flashlight and one of the pistons uh, is leaking. Now when I put those things together, I did notice one of the pistons, the brake pistons, uh, had a score in it, like a scratch, pretty deep. So I'm pretty, I would bet that it, that's the one that's leaking. So I ordered new pistons, not a big deal, just a small setback, but it's like little stuff like that. It's just time consuming. So that is what's going on. Um, I hope you guys are killing it, man. I know there's a lot of weird shit going on in the US right now, in the world, really. There's just a lot of weird stuff and uh, I hope you guys are doing well. And you know, I'm gonna try to pump out some more content for you guys. The video putting the motor in and everything should be out. Um, 
maybe this week. I'm not 100% sure if I'll get it done by then, but it will definitely be out next week. And we will be doing a first start video so we can finally hear what this thing sounds like. So if you guys have been enjoying the project, make sure to give me a thumbs up. That helps me out a lot. And definitely follow me on Instagram at michaelsabo350 because I have been posting updates on there. So uh, while some of the videos on YouTube can be spaced out a little bit, I usually do post up updates on my Instagram page. So definitely give me a follow there. I appreciate all you guys. I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.